Hello, in this video we are given a probability distribution and we want to calculate the mean, variance, standard deviation, and the expected value of x. Before we get started, let's do a quick formula review and remind ourselves of the rounding rules of these for our probability distribution. In this diagram here, it shows the formula, how we would read it. So for example, how we would pronounce these symbols. This is a mu, right, mu. And then it displays what it is. Notice that there are two formulas that you could use for the variance, and that is 100% up to you and your preference of which one you want to use to get the answer. And if you're in my class, depending on, again, which textbook you might be using, you might have a different rounding rule, but for us, it's going to be one more decimal place than the random variable. So remember, these are your random variables. So one more decimal place than your random variable in the distribution. And then the expected value is just your mean. It's your theoretical value of the mean. So once you've calculated the mean here, Whenever you get asked the expected value, you're just gonna write the same answer that you had there. There's no more additional math that you need to do. So let's go ahead and grab some paper and do these calculations together and get comfortable with knowing how to type those formulas into the calculator. So the first thing that I notice with this discrete probability distribution is there is a missing value in the table. So let's go back over and practice how we do that. We know that with a probability distribution, the sum of all of these values needs to be equal to one. So that means that on my calculator, I would do one minus all of the values that I do have. So if I add up all of those values and then subtract it from a total of one, I'm gonna get that this missing probability value is 0 0.30. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the formula first. This is always a good practice for us as mathematicians so that the reader knows what, what we're doing, what calculation we're doing, and it also reinforces what the formula is for the student. So the mean is going to be equal to the summation of x times the probability value. So for each one of these x values, we're going to multiply it by its corresponding probability value and keep adding those up. x value times the probability value, x value times the probability value, x value times the probability value. And if we grab our calculator, we can go over this together. If I go to Desmos Scientific Calculator, it helps me to easily see what I'm typing in. It also really helps to make sure I close my parentheses like I need to. So it's a good alternative to using a graphing calculator sometimes for quick calculations like this, especially if you're in front of the screen doing your homework online. If you're watching this video and you're a student in my class, you will be able to use um, this linked in your online exams as well as your graphing calculator. So here we go, double checking. I typed the numbers correctly of the problem. I did. So that would be our final answer. If, by the way, you ever needed a fraction version of your answer, Desmos has a quick little button that you can press to get that fraction. All right, so our final answer is going to be 14.4, and it was 100% 14.4. There were no other decimals that came after that, but if there were other decimals, we just want to make sure we go one more than this random variable here. So mu, or the mean, is equal to 14.4, and if we had context like dollars or inches or feet, we would make sure we included our units in this. The next thing that we want to calculate is the standard is the variance. Okay, the variance, remember, was the one that had two different formulas we can use. So this is the formula I'm going to use because it looks so similar to the mean. Okay, the only difference here is that we are squaring each of these x values that you see, and then we subtract the mean squared. So each, so exactly how we wrote it for the mean, but now we square each of those x values. And then once we're done calculating that, then we're gonna go ahead and subtract the value of the mean squared. Let's go back to Desmos and type this into our calculator. The best parts of using Desmos to answer this question is I could easily just copy and paste it. And then each one of these just needs an exponent. So I just use my keyboard to do that, but otherwise I would just press this exponent button and put whatever exponent power I have. And then I would subtract this answer um, I would subtract the mean of 14.4 squared, and this gives us the variance. All right, and then again, just box your answer. And if we had units, these would be squared units because variance is a square value. 
And the next thing we're going to do is the standard de deviation. Now, usually for my class, I would ask the student to calculate the standard deviation first and then use the variance. So we would just square it. So here we just need to take the square root of it. So you see it's the same formula, same formula, but it's the square root of it. And so what we can do is come back to Desmos. So if you've already calculated the variance and you need to do the standard deviation, you can simply take the square root of that previous answer. I would always make sure that you're taking the square root of all of that data rather than this rounded answer, because in this case, in the numbers that we're working with right now, these were the final decimal answers, yes. But you might be working with data that results in more than one decimal. And if you use the rounded value for that square root calculation, you no longer have an accurate answer. So if you had different data values here, if you had more decimals, I would do what I just did, which is take the square root of the whole problem, just like the formula has, right? This is the formula. What I just typed in right here is the formula of the standard deviation. So you never want to make a human error by using rounded values. Always use your most exact answer. All right, and then writing it on our paper, we get 8.763. So talking about our rounding rules, we want to make sure that we round one more than that random variable x right there. So if we have whole numbers here, then that means that one more decimal would be just one decimal place here. So remember our rounding rules, if we want to round to one decimal place here, we always have to look at the next digit. And that next digit tells us, do we round up or do we stay at seven? So five or higher tells us to round this seven to an eight. And as a reminder, whatever the context was, if we had units, we would make sure that this was just regular units. Last but not least is that expected value of X, which we denote E of X, right? P probability would be P of X. Expected value is E of X, E parentheses, X parentheses. And remember that this is just equal to our expected, um, this is our theoretical mean. So this is our mu here, our population mean of 14.4. And again, you would finish with your units. So that walks you through the skills needed to calculate the mean, variance, standard deviation, and expected value of a probability distribution.